It's not easy for land mammals as large as elephants to adapt and ensure the continuation of their own species. During these times when urban spaces are eating into large chunks of their jungle habitat. With their foraging space significantly reduced, elephants must come together to live in homes where they coexist with their mahouts. These mahouts belong to an elephant keeping profession of which there are not many left who specialize in these traditional skills. In the majority of cases, the mahouts develop a strong bond with the elephants since the pachyderms are of a young age. Some learn their mahootship skills from their own families. Elephants are not pets that can be taken from place to place as one pleases. The elephant's enormous size and sensitivity to the surrounding environment mean that the mahout's constant supervision is required. The mahouts must basically dedicate their entire life to the elephants until death do they part. The voice calling the elephant has a strong foreign accent. Pong Rosukon, an elephant in her 70s, who is taking pleasure in her breakfast, comes to a pause in response to the voice. Rosukon quickly uses her trunk to throw the grass in front of her. She follows the voice calling her. Rosukon's keeper is a foreigner who had to learn to speak Thai in order to communicate with her elephants and her colleagues. Michelle Reedy from Australia has a kangaroo tattoo from her home country on one side and an elephant tattoo on the other side. She followed her true calling to care for these animals in their range countries so that they can conduct their lives in a rapidly changing society. Michelle founded Elephant's Day, a retirement home for elephants with her life partner, Ewa Nakiewicz, who is also from Australia. Elephant's Day provides aging elephants with a good quality of life over the remainder of their days. Elephant Stay also serves to communicate accurate information and better understanding concerning Thailand's elephants to the rest of the world. from the land of kangaroos to the elephants of the Old Kingdom. Nom Gao, a two-year-old bull elephant, walks around with flapping ears and a swinging trunk. He poses to greet those who are visiting his fellow elephants at Ayutthaya's Royal Grau village. Nom Glau is the big star here. In other words, he's a child celebrity who not only has the looks, but also the intelligence of an elephant who can be trained more easily than his peers. So Nom Klau is often the front of house model who brings in the visitors. But it's not like he can do this all the time. There are times when Nom Klau has had too much to eat or maybe he's not feeling well. In these cases, his mahu does not force him to do anything that he doesn't feel like doing. The mahu tells us that Nom Klau remembers the timing 
of his daily activities very well. Whether it's eating, bathing, or walking exercises, it seems that Nom Klau is good at everything he does, from morning to bedtime. Nom Glau may not be aware that his ancestors didn't get to experience the kind of fun that he's having. The previous generations of elephants were mainly trained for forest logging. Elephants of times long past crossed rivers and streams, traveled long distances, and fought in wars alongside soldiers. They were trained not to panic when surrounded by enemies. Some elephants were raised and cared for according to traditional principles and practices that befitted their status as elephants of the throne. Itipan Kaulamai, general manager of the Ayutthaya Elephant Palace, explains how this place formed an important chapter in elephant human history. This was the location of the Department of Pra Kochiban or the Department of Elephant Affairs. As military weapons in and of themselves, war elephants were sourced from the jungle and trained for service in the affairs of state. Behind us is the Elephant Kral, an ancient site that hosted the kings of the Ayutthaya dynasty as they watched the shepherding and capturing of wild elephants. Regardless of the period in history, the elephant has always been associated with honor and status. <laughs> มหาราชจะต้องประกอบด้วยสัพพะรัตนะประกอบด้วยช้างแก้วม้าแก้วจักรแก้วดวงแก้วขุนคางแก้วขุนนางแก้วนะครับมันช้างเป็นสัตว์
Work for elephants in this day and age involves meeting more people. Tourists and mahouts help to look after the elephants, especially to keep them from wandering off onto other people's property. Since the elephants don't live in a forest environment, they are brought up to live in restricted spaces. Many elephants don't even know what a forest is. They don't have the wild instincts that would allow them to forage in a natural habitat. It's people who bring food to the elephants. There needs to be a tethering post and medical supplies, and all of this costs money to obtain. The Royal Graal Village is home to over 80 elephants. Work needs to be found for the elephants so that the income brought in can sustain both the elephants and their mahouts. No matter the level of hardship everyone is going through, no one will ever abandon their elephants. The elephant is a national symbol that needs to be preserved, and the duty of conservation falls upon the shoulders of every department. Michelle Reedy and Ewa Narkiewicz formed the Australian team of the Pra Cochaban Foundation. They set up the Elephant State Project, the retirement home for elephants, in the Royal Kral Village. Elephant State creates new roles for elephants that are no longer capable of doing the work they used to do. For elephants over the age of 45, just what can be done to help them live meaningful lives after retiring from their previous careers with the Mahouts. Michelle tells us to try to adopt the animal's perspective as our own. She has now entered an age range similar to the elephants that she cares for. Michelle's knees are not very good her physical health may not be so different from that of some of her older elephants that have really had to slow down. Nineteen years ago, Michelle and Ewa arrived at the elephant village in Thailand for the very first time, and they developed an interest in the serious study of elephants. They admit that during those early stages of learning, Neither of them were very familiar with the elephants. Their first task was to learn the Thai language used to communicate with mahouts and elephants. Well, the first place we came to was here and we thought it was amazing, really amazing. We were very impressed with what they were doing and their commitment to the elephants and their vision for the elephants. And so we just really fell in love with the elephants here and the place and the rest is history. Before Ever and I came to live here, Elephant Stay didn't exist. They wanted something to retire the old elephants. So we came back to live in beginning of 2006 and came up with, the, Ever and I came up with the idea of um, Elephant Stay. Ever made the website. We both wrote the handbook and then we started advertising for people to come um, and that's when they started coming, about halfway through 2006. But the reason we were attracted to here, to Ayutthaya and the Royal Elephant Kraal, is because of Piom and Pilek and the work that they've put in to make a difference to elephants and they were really pu putting the money in out of their own pocket and really wanted to make a difference. So we thought we could 
do more, help more elephants if we came here to help them. It's difficult to find another place in the world that allows humans to be this close to elephants. The elephants and people of Thailand have a long history of coexistence in almost every area. From governance to economics to social structuring, the elephant's presence has always been overarching, especially in the royal ceremonies in which the status of the elephant has been supremely honored. So the story of elephants does not only concern their enormous size and their unique and intelligent qualities. Elephants have always been an important part of the history and ways of life of the people of Thailand. Michelle and Ewa are proud to stand alongside the elephants and the people of Thailand. Elephants Day as a retirement home for elephants is the result of the brain power of these two remarkable women. The project's model seeks to find the middle ground between the needs of both elephants and humans. In other words, Elephant Stay provides visitors with the experience of being close to elephants. The visitors' participation in different activities with the elephants in turn serves as a form of enrichment for the elephants. The elephants' healthcare needs are closely tended to. The elephants get taken out for walks and have daily baths. There is also a constant supply of good food delivered to the village by elephant lovers. But not all foods can be fed to the elephants. Food deliverers must ask the mahouts and the vet first if the elephants can eat each individual offering. If there is no selection process of foods for the elephants, or even if they are fed too much, they can become ill as a result of this oversight. ใช่ครับอ๋อเพิ่งโควิดมาเนี่ยนะใช่ครับอ๋อเพราะว่าไอ้เราอ่ะยังออกไปหาอาหารกินได้หาปูหาปลาตามท้องไร่ท้องนา
you know, we've put her on it to try and bring up her red blood cell count. Um, Rossicon's old and jumpy is, um, it's that, and, and Utah was, she got sick and so we were trying to bring her up to strength again. So it's just a supplement to help, to help them um, get stronger. And we normally give it to them every day um, with the old elephants. Like Rasami, Rasami's not skinny. Rasami, you saw at the river, she, she has a problem of being too big. So we would give her one every now and then. Not every day, Rasami doesn't get it because she's fat. <laughs> From humble beginnings when their interest in being close to elephants was born to the day their hopes and dreams were fulfilled, it has now been 14 years since Michelle and Awa left the land of kangaroos to live alongside the elephants of the Old Kingdom. They have been accepted by the village mahouts and even Mr. Lai Tongrian, the founder of the Royal Graal Village decided to give soy cedary to Michelle and Ewa. Soy cedary became their daughter from the time she was a baby. Today she has become a young lady who was used to getting lots of attention and treats. Thailand has trained elephants. If you're welcoming a new king or, or mourning a past king, the elephants should be there because the elephants are a big part of Thailand. I mean, Thailand would not be what it is today without the elephants. They fought in the battles, they, they died in battle just like the soldiers and, and people. So I think the elephants should be revered. They should be lifted up in status. And, and to lift their status, you have to lift the, the status of the Quan Chang, the Mohut. If you don't lift the status of the Mohut, and then you won't have elephants in the future. You'll only have some wild elephants. But I, th I truly believe that if elephants are going to survive into the future in Thailand, you need to take care of the elephants in the home. The wild elephants, they're losing land, they're, they're dying quicker than they're breeding. You have to protect them too, but elephants that live with people, that is really important. History and culture to keep and, and, and cherish. And I wish that Thai people would embrace that and not listen to all the negative stuff from the West and Europe and other countries that don't have the experience of looking after elephants. Those countries, they don't have, they have elephants in the zoo. But I think Thai people should embrace the elephants and the mahouts who look after them and, and the mahouts know them and study them and work really hard. It's a hard job. It's a really hard job. <laughs> On our next episode, our Spirit of Asia team will still be with Michelle and Awa as they introduce us to Lexi, an American woman who is helping out at Elephant's Day. We'll also learn more about Mahootship and using social media to communicate with elephant lovers across the globe. The time has come to send a friend request to your favorite elephant. Please follow and like us on Facebook. <laughs>